Hi everybody and welcome, it's Scarlett Pete, Self Sufficiency. Today I'm going to be showing you how I mince meat. We've just butchered uh, one of our cemental beef cows and this is a small section we have here to deal with. And I'm using a Kenwood Chef and its mincer attachment to mince. So I thought I'd show you some basics of using a mincer. So what we've got here firstly is a knife or two, some sharpeners, some bags to store the um, meat in, a Kenwood Chef and its attachment here. So first of all we need to set the attachment. Now normally I have a little trap door on here that took me ages to work out that you have a little button under here that you move from side to side. That's how you get the attachments in and out. So we're going to put the attachment in, pull the button and lock it in place. That's now locked in place. Next we've got to find the blade and the spiral. So we have a spiral that goes through the centre, that just clicks in. Then we need to put our blade on. Now the blade here and the mincing plate. The blade has to cut against the mincing plate. Like that I think, yes that's the way. So we put that on, like, put that into it. If you get the blade the wrong way around, it won't be mincing. Now at the bottom here, we have a little hole out, and in the bottom here we have a little place for that to fit in. That's that. That's in. And now we put on the plate. Now we do not tighten it that tight, so you put it on, you go back a little bit. So there's a bit of slack in that, because this is all going to heat up when it's working and that is going to end up making it impossible to get off. Now we have a tray that goes on the top that's going to accept the meat. I've got a large gastronome tray here to receive the meat and this is the piece of meat that I'm going to be mincing. Now normally if you're making burgers and mince you want to have a certain proportion of fat but my husband wants this absolutely pure meat because he wants to make beef tartare which is raw meat, raw beef, uh, made into some pâtés and you, you eat it raw, lots of spices. Not my thing at all. So, as you can see in this, this demonstrates really well here the, the grain of the meat. Just for a future reference, when you're cutting meat and you want to make sure it's a tender steak, do not cut along with the grain, you need to cut against the grain like this. So it's already cutting up those fibres small for you, um, so you get a nice nice soft meat. I've cut all the fat off, that's over here. The fat's going to be rendered later and here's a couple of steaks I've got to show you that we've also cut. Look at the marbling on that, a beautiful, um, beautiful grass-fed, pasture-reared cow. So first of all we need to cut this into long strips and those strips then will be fed into the machine here, like that going straight in and it should pull them in nicely. So I'm going to cut this up and get back to you in a minute with my very sharp knives. Just some long strips like this. You see? As you can see we've got some nice long thin strips that my machine likes, likes long thin strips. And we're going to switch it on and I'll just feed some in and show you what we get out of it. It will actually suck in the meat.
so we've finished doing that now and you might wonder why have we got some onions and some bread here this is the time we need to clean it and this is the magic that does it first of all we'll clean two onions and we'll cut the bread up into some slices so what we're going to do is switch it on and we're going to feed through first the onion the onion actually cleans the machine now is some quite dry bread so we know that it's got most of the meat out of the machine now that can be used in making a burger I would mix the onion and the bread with a bit of meat and we have a lovely burger with some spices let's take the machine to pieces and see what we've got good job we didn't tighten it too tight look because it's already quite tight to open need to get the blade off the front Just slip a knife behind it to ease it off. Pop out the blade. That's got plenty of meat still left on it, see? And then pull out. So pull it off here. We've got that off by releasing with the handle down here. Push this out. And we shouldn't have very much fat or meat on this at all. So now we have a really clean part of the mincer to clean up. So you can see it's not very dirty. Yes, we've got to wash it, but at least we've got most of that meat out of there and not wasted any. So all that leaves me to do now is bag up the meat, put it in the freezer. Talking of freezers, would you like to see what we have put in the freezer already? We've got a freezer full of lots of nice, well, it's not full yet. It will be. This is just the front, small portion of the front quarter that we've got in there at the moment. So we're going to be eating beef for a long time. So what I'd like to just tell you is, I highly, highly recommend the Kenwood Chef. I've got the Kenwood Chef Titanium, that's the professional version. Don't forget to use the dibber to push things in. Not your fingers, because that will be your fingers if you put them in there. Um, gas chenom trays are a great help and when you're finished when we've washed these in hot water later and cleaned them you then wrap them in grease proof paper with a little bit of um, oil on as in a cooking oil so I'm going to use avocado oil or grape oil wrap them up and keep them somewhere dry this is the blade that we would keep clean like that the blade and the mincing dye at the front we would wrap that into some paper grease proof paper and put it somewhere safe in a bag i hope you really have found that helpful and useful and stay with us to see what we're doing next soon we'll be doing beef jerky i've got yet some more lard there to render so take care thanks for watching please like subscribe and share and give a comment so i know you're there bye bye